Hello, my name is John Snyder with Anderson Engineering. Today we're going to continue how to prepare samples for field classification or using the visual manual method. We have some soil here that we've already prepared. We passed it through the number 40 sieve. So basically we took all the big rocks out and the bigger sand and we left it so that particles the size of a salt grain or sugar grain, the individual grain, you know, about the size of your pencil lead could pass through. We added water and got it to be damp to moist. So moist would be it leaves water on your hand. Uh, damp would be uh, you can feel it and it's somewhere in between. And we got it just a uh, and basically it's to get it so it's not to the sticky limit. So if it feels sticky, you probably got too much water. So we had a little sample. The test we're going to do is called the uh, the uh, roll test or the thread test, but it's also basically it essentially is the plastic limit test for the Atterberg limit. So I got a sample about the size of a sugar cube or small marble and I'm just mixing it to get the it's very consistent and I can tell this is a lean clay already because it's got the feel it takes the normal amount of effort to mix it if it was fat it would take a lot more effort because it's so flat plastic with water or fat with water if it was a silt it'd be very hard but this is a lean clay this happens to be a lean clay that has a liquid limit of close to 35 to 38, 36. A lot of geotechnical engineers use liquid limit 40 as their criteria for acceptable material. So that's why we picked this up. I just took the smaller size and I made it into a small cylinder. So, and then we're gonna roll that down to an eighth of an inch. Now on the field, uh, you could do this on a sheet of plywood, you could do it on some drywall, flip it over, do the other side of the gypsum board. Uh, anything that will just lay flat. So, this is about an eighth of an inch right here. And it still holds its, uh, it needs to crumble at an eighth of an inch, then you feel how it is, how hard it is, it's called the toughness. So, in the field, what can you do? You can do just what I'm doing here. You can sit there, just try to dry it out with your hands. You can also use a paper towel and uh, when you want the Taco Bell, you can just get some extra paper towels, lay them out, and then the moisture can be pulled out this way here. And you can see there's a little bit of moisture. Essentially when I'm rolling it or playing with it, it does the same thing. So I pulled out some more moisture, so now I'm gonna roll it around and I can feel it's getting a little bit tougher but this is normal amount of effort it doesn't take much effort to remold it and move it if it was a fat clay it would be very hard to deal with it has a lot of toughness this just has normal toughness or medium toughness so I can feel that it's a little bit and I can see it to crack a little bit when I squeeze it I'm getting a little cracking and that's what it looks like when it's near the plastic limit so I can tell it's probably close to the plastic element and it has just normal toughness. So we'll go ahead and take a smaller piece, make it into a little uh, circular. So there it started to crumble at an eighth of an inch. It's probably a little bit wet, but it's starting to crumble. And I can see that the, it's got medium toughness. So I'm gonna do one more drying and we should be done. To help expedite it, I'm just gonna put it on the paper towel, pull out some moisture, and then, so even now when I try to reassemble I can tell it's harder to, it's crumbling a little bit easier, but the, what we're really measuring is how much strength it takes, and uh, again, this is a medium strength, I can do it, it's a little bit tough, but uh, not nearly as much as a fat clay and not nearly as easy as a lean clay. So this time I'm going to take half of it, make it into a little ball, maybe a quarter inch, a little cylinder, a quarter inch, and then kind of help roll it into size. And then ever so gently, about the, si about the same pressure that you would do if you were massaging your eyeballs. You don't want to do it too much. You're just rolling it and then if it starts to break at the eighth of an inch that's the uh, 
Yeah, so we're just probably right at that. That's the plastic limit test. So we would weigh that up and get the moisture, but the, in the field, we, we're we measuring how much effort does it take to squeeze this? What is its toughness? And again, here, I can, I can squeeze it. It's not, it's just a moderate amount of uh, effort to squeeze this. And so this becomes the toughness test. So we prepared it and also did the this test. And then yours also, Grant, you can see his, he's got the one eighth inch diameter. And then what does it feel like when you squeeze, when you assemble that together and then you squeeze it? Uh, uh, it's also thing. it's also a moderate amount, you know. Yeah. So this would be like maybe like a you had a, a tube of caulk and the caulk was a little bit dry. Yeah. And you squeezed it out, it would take a moderate amount of effort. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a little bit uh, harder to, to squeeze and, and get it to, uh, but yeah, just I would say it's like a tube of caulk that, or a tube of toothpaste that maybe was just cold. And so when you squeezed it, it took a little bit of effort. That's a medium amount and that's what this was here to squeeze and that's called toughness. Good morning, my name is John Snyder with Anderson Engineering. I have Grant Thomas with me today to assist me. We're gonna do another field classification test. We prepared it yesterday. We took some samples and then uh, uh, we moistened them and got them to just below the sticky limit. So they're, they're about damp to moist or a little bit moist. And we just thoroughly mixed it up. We got rid of all the larger particles the, above the number 40. So anything bigger than a salt, uh, salt crystal size or sand uh, uh, sugar cube size. So we're gonna do what's called the roll test. And it's basically the plastic limit, but what you're noticing when you get there is what does it feel like? How much strength does it take? So we take a small sample of about the size of a, maybe a big marble. And I'm gonna get it slightly going and I'm just gonna roll it. Yeah, this one is just uh, And it, it's hard to even keep a shape. I got, I'm supposed to get this down to an eighth of an inch. But I it can't really get that low because it has it, it's hard to even form. So I'm able to form it, but I can't quite get it to an eighth of an inch. Yeah, so it's at an eighth of an inch. So this sample here, when I feel how it's not much effort to deform. So it's near the plastic limit, and when I feel this, it's a very low resistance or very low toughness. So not much effort, just like when we did the crushing strength test, it didn't take much effort to, to do that when it was dry. This one's in a wet state. So Grant, go ahead and take the other one, and let's do the, uh, this one happens to be a lean clay. And so he's gonna do the, basically the plastic limit test and roll it till it gets to about an eighth of an inch. And then we'll note what it feels like at the eighth of an inch. So again, we prepared this kind of a damp to moist to moist. We didn't want to get it sticky. Sticky is just past moist uh, and it's sticky to your hand because of the wetness, not because of it's fat or lean. So he's able to get this. This is just a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. So we have to dry it out even more to get it to be near the plastic limit. So I'm just helping Grant. I'm just gonna pull some out on this paper towel. Again, you might have a paper towel from Taco Bell or something like that, McDonald's, and you can help pull the moisture out. As you pull moisture out, that's where it starts to lose its plasticity and become a little bit more brittle. And that's why they call it the plastic limit because we're getting, we're just at the limit where it no longer is plastic and it starts to crumble. So that one, why don't you try that one, Grant? Yeah. I'll pull some water out and we'll see if we can get it near. And then we want to feel what's the toughness at that plastic limit. So as he's rolling it, it just helps pull moisture out. Just like when I'm putting on the paper towel, I'm pulling moisture out. So he's just starting to break at the plastic. It's a little bit, here, try this one here, get that one. 
so I can feel the sample I just dried out was a little bit tougher so this one's just, so he's just breaking it this now. This is about perfect. Yeah that's an eighth of an inch and it's just starting to break that means it's uh, lost its plasticity so it's at the plastic limit. I would roll these out here sure. too. And then we'll feel what does that feel like at the plastic limit. So it's just starting to break. Before it didn't break because it had a little bit more moisture. So now it's starting to break. So we'll just pull all that stuff together. And then what kind of toughness or resistance does it have at this level? I just mix it up. And we've done this so much. This is just normal resistance. You know, five, ten pounds of pressure. Fairly easy to roll that and make it so. Again, it's not much, it's a moderate amount of resistance, so that's what we call lean clay. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing with our fat clay. So here, we'll grab some here and we'll do this one but together. We This one was going to require taking some moisture out, we know, just because it is moist. Uh, we could roll this, I'll roll a little bit just to prove, but I could roll this. And again, you're supposed to put just a moderate amount, maybe as much uh, as you rub your eyeballs if you were tired, but I can, I'm pushing down real hard on this and it is so plastic, I can get this ultra thin. So we got a long ways to go to pull the water out. Uh, again, they call this fat clay because it loves water and is able to hold on to the water really, really well. So it's called fat with clay or full of clay. So Grant's just using the paper towel to pull it out. I'm using the paper towel to pull it out. We, one way you can tell it's near plastic is just because it starts to lose its plasticity. It starts to break and crumble. One technique to do the same thing if you're in the field, just pick up a, yeah, about a little clod of dirt and hopefully it's already moist and just mix it. And then you can start doing what I'm doing, just rib, you know, ribbing it in your hand. When you do that every time, it's drying out on your hand. You can see my hands are a little bit moist. I could take a piece of towel and just walk around while I'm looking at the site, see what's going on, and I could pull moisture out. Uh, just doing it by hand won't take but a minute or two. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a minute for a lean clay, you know, 10 or 15 seconds for a silt, but for a fat clay, you'll be playing with it for a long time to get rid of the moisture. We used a paper towel to get rid of the moisture, but I know this is not even close to the liquid limit, but it also, right now, it feels very tough. It is noticeably harder to work with. I'm using two hands to, to squeeze it because it's tougher. Uh, and I'm almost certain I could go way below eighth of an inch still. You gotta get this kind of rolled up into a, a little bit of a cigar shape before you start because and I'm pushing a lot of effort. This would be way more than I would massage my eyes because this I'm putting a lot of effort on here. And here again I can get the super tiny ribbon, which means it's uh it's still too wet and way too much water. And right now it's just really tough. So I'm just going to take a smaller piece and work it harder to get it near the plastic limit. Yeah, this is even tough. I mean, it's, you can see it's starting to crumble too a little bit when I play with it here. That means it's getting near the plastic limit because it can't be plastic as much. It has to be crumbly, but the crumbly, if a, the technical word is plastic on and then it starts to crumble at an eighth of an inch so this is getting closer you know I'm starting to break some but even this is still too wet I can get less than an eighth so maybe one more time and we'll be close on this sample and this is tough 
you know, again, I'm using two hands because it's tough to move. When it's a lean clay, I notice I only use one hand. And it, with two hands, it's tough. I mean, my hands are getting a little bit uh, tired playing around with it so much. So I either played with it enough to do the test or I've just worked it in my hands enough that uh, when I squeeze it, Again, you can see the uh, there's some cracks, and that's just it drying. And again, it's uh, it's pretty tough to the hand, so I'm starting to get breaks. Yeah, so right at an eight, so this is pretty close. It's starting to break. So when I put this together, what I feel is something. It's hard to work with. I mean, noticeably harder several times uh, harder than the lean clay. Taking two fingers, if I just did it with one hand, this is too much. Uh, is a, after two or three times, this is sore already. But the big thing, I can tell it's 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 cracking right now, but it takes considerable effort to, to remold it, or it's called very tough. So that's what we have. We have not much effort for the silts, uh, moderate amount for lean clays and if you have a fat clay like this it's very hard it's very very tough thank you